between its six inversions and beyond vertical drop. Today, I'm gonna take you guys through the whole overall experience that I took away from Fahrenheit at Hershey Park. All right, let's kick things off with the very first part of the experience, which is of course waiting in the queue before actually riding the coaster. I waited in both the fast track line and regular queue to give you guys an overall idea of what's more worth it, buying a faster wait time or waiting in a line that might actually not be that bad. Starting off with the fast track queue, I was extremely happy when it literally goes straight into a staircase leading up to the station, versus some of Hershey's other coasters like Wildcat, where the fast track lane actually only takes you about halfway and you still end up waiting in a majority of the regular queue. This left me extremely satisfied with the fast track pass on Fahrenheit, and had little to no complaints when the regular line was an hour and a half, and I only waited 15 minutes. Looking at the regular line, for those of you who choose not to buy the fast track pass, besides being made out of a ton of switchbacks crammed into a small courtyard, the dispatches on Fahrenheit are actually fairly quick, meaning that that hour and a half really didn't feel that long. Once you've waited in either line, you'll find yourself meeting up at the top of the station platform, where you will be assigned a row. What row you will be assigned to varies, however, some are definitely better than others. From my personal experience, the front row was my favorite, leading into the back, which was my least favorite for two main reasons. One, Fahrenheit actually has this pretty bad rattle that becomes more obvious towards the back of the train. I actually first noticed this on my second ride when traversing the Cobra Roll. Second, the cars on each of Fahrenheit's trains actually sit pretty high, and for smaller riders like myself, it's actually pretty difficult to see exactly what's going on from the middle through to the back. So, in my personal opinion, to get the best ride on Fahrenheit, try your best to get a front row seat. It's well worth it. Okay, so now you've secured your seat on one of the three trains, and proceed to exit the station. The train is going to turn right on a flat bank section of track, which is slightly sloped downwards. You will then find yourself stopped on a flat section with the chain below you, which warps upwards to 90 degrees on the actual lift. The train then engages with the chain, and you will ascend the lift to a max height of approximately 121 feet. Here is where you will crest the highest point of the ride before plummeting at a max vertical angle of 97 degrees back towards the ground. This drop actually has a pretty noticeable pop of air time at the top as you get pulled over, and thanks to some very comfortable restraints as well, it is also reasonably smooth and very enjoyable. From this point on, the ride keeps an extremely quick pacing until the final brake run, traversing through some very fun and notable inversions. First comes a massive Norwegian loop, which can only currently be found on three coasters throughout the world. A Norwegian loop is an inversion that inverts twice, resulting in something similar to a dive loop followed by a juxtaposed Immelman. It was a super odd element, one that took me by surprise, and it would be an understatement to say that I really enjoyed it. After this, prepare for an extremely steep speed hill and do a classic Cobra roll. I've experienced many Cobra rolls whilst I've been an enthusiast, and this one was pretty average, but of course still fun. I mentioned it has a pretty bad rattle, especially coming out of the second roll, however, I will say the pacing is pretty good and I can't complain too much. If you want to check out more on the Cobra roll and how it's designed by engineers, take a look at our other video posted on the top right corner of the screen, the science behind Cobra rolls. After flying out of this inversion, prepare to take two more. Listed as a double corkscrew, these next two elements are exceptionally whippy and maintain the same speed throughout their duration. Unlike some double corkscrews, which can be considered one element, I would consider these personally to be two separate elements, because in between the corkscrews, the track more or less levels out. I would similarly compare them to the rolls on Maverick's Twisted Horseshoe Roll, just super quick and intense. After getting absolutely thrown through these, prepare for what, in my opinion, is one of the top 10 best airtime elements on any coaster I've personally ridden. Following that second corkscrew, there is this unbelievably ridiculous airtime slash speed hill that wants to send you sky high. There is no lateral banking, and the change in slope given the fairly small length of space the hill takes up is just flat out insane. I was literally catapulted out of my seat and was 100% floating over the entire top of this hill. Prepare to waste no time whatsoever and slam into a wide, low to the ground left bank turn that will send you straight into the final brake run. From here, the train makes its last 135 degree turn back into the station and concludes the minute 25 second ride you just had on Fahrenheit. All of that being said, my final analysis of Fahrenheit summed up in one sentence is as follows. Fahrenheit was an extremely intense ride packed with a fun mix of inversions, twists, and hills that sustained a very well-paced ride experience. If I had to tell you what my favorite part was, I would probably say that little but very impactful airtime hill at the end, 
However, I can't let it take away from the overall awesome experience I had on Fahrenheit, despite getting a little sick on those last two corkscrews. As always, I'd like to thank you all for watching this fairly short but in-depth analysis of Fahrenheit at Hershey Park and why I enjoyed it so much. It's been a pleasure creating new content for you guys, and before I go, I'd like to take a quick moment and thank my absolutely amazing dad, who has supported me and made this trip possible for my family and I, resulting in this review I was able to give all of you today. I hope we'll see you all again here for our Cedar Point vlog releasing on Wednesday, or catch me daily on Instagram linked in the description for a post highlighting a random coaster. See ya!